adventure for me. A single bat appears as a fluttering shadow in the moonlight. What does it seek? The lonely bat joins his many brothers as they hang quietly from the branches of a dead tree. They will not be quiet for long. of the people living in that house and many others. Papa, aren't you through with that work yet? You ought to get some rest with that conference starting tomorrow. That's why I'm working late, my dear. I want to show these formulas to Dr. Quasion when he arrives for that conference. Is he the famous mathematics expert from overseas? Yes. You see, the conference is devoted to scientific progress for peace. He can help me with my plans for the cargo rocket. Oh, it's exciting, Papa. But I'm worried. You know the two scientists have simply disappeared, just suddenly vanished. And it makes me nervous about your safety. Don't worry, Betty, dear. The Chief Fumble Thumbs of the International Crime Prevention Bureau is providing complete protection. Well, I... <gasps> What's that? I'm sure I heard something in the window, Papa. Didn't you? Yes, I heard the breeze move a branch. <laughs> You're imagining things, sweetheart. Go to bed. I'll be fine. Now, go on. Okay. Good night, Papa, dear. Good night, dear. Sleep well. Sweet child. She worries about me. There is a tapping at that window. Probably a loose branch on a tree or something like that. It is annoying. Chetley with the latest news. Another scientist disappears, this time along with his daughter. Dr. Multiple, the famous rocket designer, is the third great scientist to have vanished in the last several days. They are victims of kidnappers. The Metropolitan Crime Prevention Bureau, the international law enforcement body, headed by Chief Fumblethumbs, is certain now that all three scientists and the girl were kidnapped, since agents of Metro assigned to protect him were found drugged and unconscious at the home of Dr. Multiple. 
Fumble Thumbs could sure use some help on this job. Oh, you know he never calls you Tobor, except for little unimportant jobs. Except for bill collectors, the only calls we ever get in this office are wrong numbers. You know that. I admit it. But you know, even wrong numbers can be fun sometimes. <laughs> oh? Hello? This is a wrong number. An urgent, urgent wrong number. Do you understand me, Tobor? Hey! <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Tobor. I mean, eighth man. Sorry, Chief, but you and those wrong numbers. Well, that's our signal. Of course, and I'm sure Jenny thinks Tobor has secret girlfriends. I'll bet that does get embarrassing. Anyway, I tell you, I'm glad you're here. I don't have a single clue to those scientist kidnappings. Well, you know, I'm ready to get to work. Remember, Dr. Quasion is coming in tomorrow, and I wonder how to protect him. I see. Of course, I'll do everything possible. My men will be there and on the alert. But somebody seems to be collecting scientists, and we haven't been able to stop them yet. I'm worried. I've got to protect this conference, and someone's trying to break it up. Listen, here's how we'll do it, Chief. I whispered my plan in Fumble Thumb's ear. I would protect Dr. Quation by using my power of instant disguise. That's marvelous. I tell you, that's a great scheme. Remember room number three. At the airport, right. Boy, he's smart. Mm. Dr. Quasi will arrive in an hour, and I have to make sure he goes to visitors' lounge number three. Hey, anybody out there? Walter? Get a car. We're going to the airport. Move! Yes, sir. And so all of the activity begins to move toward the airport across town. Chief Bumble Thumbs and I have a plan to protect Dr. Quasian. And it all is connected with visitors room number three at the airport. Special scientist conference jet now arriving at gate three. Visitors room number three. This is it. I'll be waiting for Dr. Quasian when he gets here. Welcome, Dr. Quasion. I'm Chief Fumble Thumbs. A pleasure to know you, sir. But where is Dr. Multiple, who was supposed to meet me? I'll explain everything. This is visitor's lounge number three, known as the Oriental Room. How clever. Even the sign is in a Far East alphabet. Now, if you'll come in, I'll explain the whole situation, Doctor. Thank you. was taken to visitor's lounge number three, where I was waiting. My plan was put into action. Join the other three scientists in cold storage.
bat. Put Dr. Multiple in the suspended animation storage locker. We obey the bat. And check the two prisoners we brought in the other day, Stoogewick. We obey the bat. Another customer for the lockers. Better man the controls, Sam. Ready on the locker controls, Stoogewick. Very good. Here we go. Locker number 30. Open in the name of Batmaster. I hear you, Stoogewick. I obey the bat. Number 30 open. Standing by for further orders. In the name of the bat, close 30. I obey the bat. Open 28 and 29. I hear you, Stoogewick, and I obey the bat. 28 and 29 open. Standing by for further orders, Stoogewick. They're both asleep. Close up 28 and 29. Are you going to report to Batmaster, Stoogewick? Right, Sam. Have you put Dr. Quasion in storage, Stoogewick? I obey the bat. He is locked in locker number 30. Safe and silent, sir. Very good, Stoogewick. You are a loyal and competent gangster. Carry on. I obey the bat. Dismissed. Well, now, I imagine this pleases into crime. As director of the International Spying Bureau of Intercrime, I congratulate you. Let me assure you, Mr. Scowler, that this is only the beginning of our project. Yes, indeed. All the greatest brains in science will be filled on punch cards and for sale to the highest bidder. It's diabolical. <laughs> Along those lines, Batmaster, when do you plan to start transferring their memories to your electronic brain bank? I certainly hope it's soon. We mustn't rush these things, Scholar. Have patience. You're hesitating too much, Batmaster. Is it possible there's something wrong with the memory mover? Please, Mr. Scholar, you upset me. You sound as if you doubt my evil intentions. I'll demonstrate that the memory mover and the electronic brain bank are as perfect as possible. Now watch. There's the electronic brain bank. On that screen, you see the contents of brains that have been put on punched cards by the memory mover you see there. Now then, I call for card number 305. Watch. The memory of a cat has been electronically filed on that card. Of course, that cat no longer has any memory at all. It's all on that card. Now, 306. On this card, I have reported both dogs and cats. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's feed Dr. Multiple's memory to the machine now. <laughs> Soon, Mr. Scholar. Hmm, fine. My plan is working perfectly so far. I'll be able to take them by surprise. I'm convinced your machine is fine. Now, why can't we steal Dr. Multiple's memory? Why do we have to wait? Because it's much more difficult to move the mind of a human than it is with animals. We need more experiments. So we keep trying until we succeed. What in the world is the problem? A single failure destroys the brain of the victim completely. Hmm. We cannot gamble with Dr. Multiple. I understand. Well, then... Why don't we try the machine out on his little daughter, Betty, eh? A marvelous idea. We don't care what happens to her memory. We'll do it. I'll contact the locker room. I obey the bat. Your attention, Stoogewick. Sir. You will prepare Betty Multiple for immediate memory moving. Take her out of the locker. 
I obey the bat. Locker number 28 open, Sam. Right, Stupik, as ordered. This is it, Miss Multiple. Uh, she can say goodbye to her memory. <laughs> Don't touch that girl. It's Eighth Man. I've heard about him. Now I've met him. I have the feeling that you'll be very sorry about meeting me before I'm through. Ha! Huh. Dr. Multiple and the other scientists. What on earth are my men doing down in the locker room? I haven't heard a thing since I ordered them to get Betty Multiple ready for the memory moving machine. Stoogewick, Sam, report to me immediately. Do you hear me? Hey, the locker room is deserted. Nobody down there. What happened to my men? I have to check the other TV monitor. Hey, that's Heatman. My robot bats will fix him. What? Oh, bats. Robot bats. Those kidnappers now have four victims, three scientists and a girl. Won't the whole science conference break up if you don't solve those crimes soon, Chief Rumblethumbs? Gentlemen, we're doing everything possible. Hold that, those. You actually don't have any clues at all, do you, Chief Bumble Thumbs? Well, no, I don't, really. Then how can you have the kidnappers in two days? Well, I can't reveal the details of our secret investigation at this time. Don't let me down, Eighth Man. There. Take that. There. He's knocked out my robot bats. What a powerful enemy he is. What can we do? Intercrime will be furious if we lose those prisoners. You have to do something. I'm not licked yet. Just watch me. Hmm. Interesting little thing. Eight men! You didn't think I'd just let you walk out of here, did you, robot? I'll show you how I treat anyone who interferes with me. You'll learn a lesson. Now I've got you, Batmaster. Hit that! Don't get all. You're trapped, eighth man. <laughs> Everyone knows about the power of eighth man. You didn't think I would face you personally, even with a gun, did you? <laughs> Magnetic floor. My steel body is trapped. Uh-oh. You're helpless, eighth man. It should be amusing to find out how your robot memory will work in my brain bag. <laughs> now I have a very special treatment for you. High voltage electricity. <laughs> I'm unable to get out of here. If I stay exposed to that current too long, my electronic brain will be damaged. Got to find a way to get free. I must. I must. I've captured Eighth Man. That's fine, Batmaster. Because Eighth Man has caused Intercrime nothing but trouble for years. You did a very good job. We're well pleased with you. And now we will have the full memory of Eighth Man on a punched card. And that will be the end of Eighth Man, right? <laughs> I mustn't give up for the sake of Batmaster's victims. And for the sake of the world. If I am defeated... Intercrime will run rampant. I've got to get up. I can get up. I will get up. Look at that. He's getting loose. That's fantastic. Now, to teach them a lesson about the power of eight man. Let's see what happens when I generate electricity from my body and reverse the current of their machinery. I don't understand. Something strange is happening. Well, do something, Batmaster. Uh, I'll have to increase the current. There, that should do it. They've increased the current. Fine. I'll just increase it more and feed it right back. Ah! He reversed the charges. What, what, what shall we do? 
We've got to run for our lives. What's happening? Papa, the car is rising. No, the whole building is going up. Let's stay and see if it leads out of here. That master into crime will never forgive you if you don't get me out of here. Hurry! The dome is already going up, Scholar. Don't worry, we'll make it. Ah! Out of my way. I want out of here. Out! Out! Ah! A tunnel and daylight. That must be the way out. Let's go. We're free. Now let's find Fumble Thumbs. Must still save the two scientists in the locker room. I will be getting. Must get one of my power booster tubes. Must get one out of my pocket. Help me, Fat Master. I'm choking. Help! I'm too weak to run. Every man for himself. <laughs> my hat! My hat! <laughs> Must get one of those power boosters so I'll have strength to save the other two scientists. Ah, uh, there we go. That feels better. Now I can finish the job. Made it. They're safe. Eighth man. Eighth man. Are you all right? Eighth man. Where are you? Speak to me. Oh. Oh, there you are, eighth man. I was worried. Did Dr. Baldepol and his daughter get away all right? They sure did. They're the ones who contacted me and told me where to come. They're safe. Good. That means that all of the victims have now been rescued. Look! Well, I guess that finishes Batmaster and his whole gang, eh? Batmaster, maybe. But I'm sure I'll have many more exciting adventures fighting into crime and all other injustice throughout the world. There's a prehistoric monster who came from outer space. Created by the Martians to destroy the human race. The FBI is helpless, it's 20 stories tall. What can we do, who can we call? Call no more.